Welcome back to the Zoomer. We're down to the last couple of minutes of the show. And so I'd like to open the floor to our audience for some of their questions on the matter. And the first from Henry. Welcome to the table. Hi. Um, so I'm wondering, generally, in view of the recent strike of the Screen Guild uh, producers and creators, what impact is AI likely to have on the protection of the creative process of creative people? That's going to be uh, discussed and fought over in court. It's already happening. Uh, the chat GPT can also um, create music, can write music and lyrics. And so uh, it, remember, it's a linkages machine. It's not creative. And it's obviously borrowing phraseology from other things that have been created, including music. And so there are already are, there is already talk about this uh, leading, and there's already litigation. And will there be copyright protection for the product of to AI? Be. Has to be. Oh, really? But people whose copyright has been infringed by them are protected. Thank you. OK, go ahead. What's your name? Hi, I'm Kelly. Kelly. Uh, I was wondering, is AI going to prevent us having opportunities to speak to our doctors and having conversations with them as opposed to these chatbots? Oh, boy, is that a good question. <laughs> I mean, try to get through to anybody these days anywhere, <laughs> and you'll get some awful, yeah, thank you for your question. Will you please hold? I mean, it's just dreadful, and they don't understand. It's very primitive right now. So yeah, that's a problem. Dr. Bexbaum. I would say it actually has the potential to make it easier to see your doctor because they're going to be less bogged down by incoming messages. Some of them they'll be able to offload potentially to a more sophisticated version of ChatGPT. So it's going to make the healthcare system more efficient and you might be more able to see your doctor when you really need to and get good advice. Uh, one of the issues uh, that will make it easier for your doctor, again, is the notion of transcription after a meeting. Uh, uh, it can write up the report uh, a whole lot easier and faster, perhaps, than uh, the physician themselves uh, or uh, a nurse's aide. Uh, so I would say for the rudimentary tasks, uh, the simple uh, tasks, uh, uh, ChatGPT or others as well, too, uh, could potentially reap benefits in freeing up time for physicians to spend more time on more serious matters. OK. Kelly, thank you very much. Thank you. And before I let you go, um, we'll go around the table and collect a few final thoughts from each of you. And we'll start with Jim. I was at a conference. It's the best conference I've ever been to called NextMed Health. It used to be called Singularity Medicine. And uh, a researcher, a PhD, will spend a year understanding the interactions between two proteins around cancer. AI has been able to go through and understand exceptional number of these interactions and give to humanity 660 million years of understanding of protein interaction. So when people come and say, should we have AI? This is advancing human knowledge by 660 million years. And we stand on the shoulders of AI. And so I'm very excited about the future. Not to say we don't need guardrails, but I'm very excited about the future. Dr. Arkin. Uh, yeah, I, I'd like to comment uh, just finally on uh, the issue of deception that was brought up earlier. Uh, we need, as AI scientists and roboticists and others as well, too, to determine whether these agents should be allowed to lie to us uh, or not. That's not an easy thing to do. Uh, if you believe in Kant, you would say lying is never acceptable. Uh, if you take the utilitarian point of view, then it is occasionally. I've been working in this area of robot deception and giving talks about it worldwide for about 20 years now. And uh, we still don't have answers as to what is the right or wrong way to do it and how it will be regulated. So I think we need to pay attention to that uh, as we move forward. Yeah, I think generally speaking, I'm conservatively optimistic, but uh, I think the big tech companies who are really driving AI have to be in line with the healthcare bureaucracies who, by definition, have to be slow and careful. And so they have to get together and make sure that this goes along at the, a pace that's good for society. It's not too fast, but also not too slow. And finally, Diane. Well, uh, as I said, uh, these, these devices are just automation of human potential. Uh, and 
and rapid automation. It's very important to know from a deception point of view who's programming that device, and that's got to be regulated. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we'll have to leave it there. As always, a big thank you to my panel for your expertise and for being here and for you at home watching. We'll see you soon. For now, it's time to zoom out.